unable to edit that sheet. Shalini, that problem was there when we were doing it together in the class. Did you try afterwards offline? Shalini? Sir, actually, I restricted the edit rights oh, for okay, the okay, students. Okay. So all right, to, all right. To the so, students. Shalini, you are right, you are right. There was a restriction for a while because some column had been deleted. Uh, Oh, so I, Gayatri, we think, yeah, both of you might have had the same problem because edit rights were uh, restricted when some columns were deleted. So I hope that everything will be today. Yes. Okay, okay, all right. But do keep a copy of what you edit so that if by any chance it is deleted, you can mail it to us. And then we'll add. If there is a, still a problem, I would request to mail. Uh, you can mail to SD. At this is my office uh, support number at yan.org. So Megha is helping me in this course. Megha Gajja, she's online just now. So this mail will go to her. Megha, can you uh, video put your video on just for a minute? People can see your face. Megha, yes. So Megha would be able to receive your mail sent to sd at yan.org. And then she will update in case you still find problem in updating the sheet. All right. That's what All right. Now the YouTube video is on. And I think we can start with the discussion today. So what I'm going to share with you today is... Uh, hello. Hello. Any problem? No, sir. Mm -hmm. So, let me try again. All right. So, what we are discussing today is evolution of an ecosystem for inclusive innovations for and from grassroots. Uh, this journey began more than 33 years ago. And at that time, it used to be a system where people will go to the communities, document their knowledge, publish papers, become famous, and people will remain anonymous. That was the custom. Even when sometimes scientists will collect some material, such as uh, a, a crop variety that has been developed by some farmer, they will make, they will purify the seed. For example, in oil seed and in pulses, many varieties that were selected, that were released in the 80s, 90s, were nothing but selection from farmer's own selection, farmer's own varieties. So scientists have merely purified them. They have not done any breeding in them in many of those varieties. Later on, of course, they have done. So the point I'm trying to drive home is that there was a one-way street. The formal system will go to the informal system, communities, collect their knowledge, collect their material, collect their resources, collect their ideas, add value wherever necessary or use it as such, publish papers, develop solutions, diffuse them, get credit for them, and nothing ever went back to people in the form of either benefit sharing or in the form of uh, attribution or acknowledgement. So this was very uncomfortable situation. I had done a study in 84. In 1980, I did a study on communicating with people and how their knowledge can make a difference. But still, I was not clear as to whether I need to do anything further. In 84, I did a study on matching farmers' concerns with technologist objectives. That gave me ideas where it, many times scientists have different criteria or different parameters in optimizing a solution. And the communities have a different opti opt optimization. For instance, uh, I noticed that in many of the crops, particularly dryland crops, millets, sorghum, the ratio of straw to grain was much higher in the traditional varieties and much lesser in the Modern varieties. Modern varieties had almost one is to one ratio. Traditional varieties had straw to grain ratio almost two to three, two to one or three to one. 
because their economy in dry region depended upon livestock. They needed fodder for that. And these varieties, therefore, provided fodder. Since three years out of five would be drought year, they have to depend upon livestock to manage. If the scientists realized this lacuna in the modern varieties much later, and then they changed the breeding goals. So I was trying to see how scientists decide the objectives of a research program, of a breeding program, in this case of agriculture, and how do farmers decide, and can we bridge that gap? Uh, there was another example, once I was talking to the gene bank. Gene bank is the place where you collect the seeds of different land races, varieties, crops that have been developed. So we have a National Bureau of Plant Genetic Resources, NBPGR, which is the gene bank of our country in Delhi. So I was, there was a meeting with Dr. Swaminathan organized, and uh, there was a gene bank head of ICRISAT. ICRISAT, as you might, some of you might know, is an international center for research in semi arid tropics in, uh, near Hyderabad. So the gene bank manager, Dr. Mangesha, was sitting there and I asked him, Do you characterize the sorghum or jawar varieties on the storability of the grain? And he said, no, we don't have that. So there's a system of what is called descriptor. Descriptor is the format in which every variety is described and entered into the database. So in this database, they had no column for uh, shelf life or storability of the grains. They didn't think it was a relevant parameter. Can you imagine the consequence of that? The consequence of that was that when hybrid sorghum was developed, public distribution system will not have it. Government will not procure it because they can't store it. It will get spoiled after a few months. Now, negligence on the part of scientists when they did not take into account the proper parameters for PDS, public distribution system, and for food for work program, uh, that led to the disadvantage for the farmers who grew hybrid sorghum because they wouldn't get good price if people couldn't store it. So please understand that I was asking these questions about the chasm between formal and informal system and I was trying to ask myself this question, how do we align the goals? This course is also a step in that direction. Uh, if we are doing research on metallurgy, some of you are from NML and from other labs, and if you wanted to see what is the importance of high carbon or low carbon steel, and then you ask the question whether tribal people had a technology by which they could make low carbon steel. As you might know that we uh, have to get it from Japan and some high quality steel from Germany and many other places for medical devices. We hardly make any specialty steel. So then the question will arise, can we learn something from the way people design their furnaces? People design the system of measuring temperature when they have to uh, break their furnace to get the steel out of the ore. And some of you might be intrigued when you hear that uh, we found that some tribal people will hear the sound of the fire to estimate the temperature. They will take a pipe, put it on the furnace, hear the sound of the fire from the surface of the furnace, and now is the time they will realize to break it. Otherwise, it will become ash. So whether it is metallurgy, it is ceramics, as you know, archaeologically, when people dig in deep into the past and try to find out the signatures, the kind of pottery that was made at different times in the history or prehistory period gives us an idea as to how old that civilization must have been. So ceramics have been part of our culture for thousands of years, 10,000 years and maybe maybe more. So naturally, there was a way in which uh, people must have evolved that science. You know that uh, when the shipping took place between Latin America and India, there have been some studies to show that on the Western coast, there were some glass beads were found. So there must be knowledge of glass at that time. That's how the glass beads came from there, from Caribbean and other places. 
So there have been exchange of knowledge for a long time. That was not new. What we were trying to do new was the ethics or the rules of the game by which the knowledge will be exchanged between formal and informal system. We wanted to change those rules of the game. So there were four key principles that we decided that Honeybee Network will have. First was that uh, whatever we collect from the people will be acknowledged. People will not become anonymous. Second, we will exchange, we will share back with them what we learned from them and from others. So that means if one person has shared one innovation, we will share 50 more with that person in that domain so that the person feels enriched <clears throat> by our work. So there will be a reciprocity. Third, that if we add any value, we will share that in local language. So if you write a paper, you find you do some characterization of a traditional herb, which people have been using for malaria and you want to develop some medicine. As you know, Sincona was used by the American, the American Indians in US from which the drug was, malaria drug was isolated. So it was, there's a very interesting book, some of you might like to read, American Givers. And that provides what the European Americans got from the Native Americans. And this was one other thing, because malaria would have wiped out otherwise European people if they didn't discover this medicine. So uh, there have been a lot of such exchanges, a lot of such exchanges, but we were trying to say that they should be fair. And we are, our good fourth point was, if we generate any benefits, we generate any consultancy, we get any honorarium, we get any uh, reward, we get any money, like commercialization, royalty, a share of that must go back, a reasonable share must go back to people whose knowledge contributed to that. That was our goal. So this is how we began and things began to change. Mind you, this was much before CBD came into being. What is CBD? Convention on Biological Diversity. Convention on Biological Diversity. That was in 92. Earth Summit took place. And we are talking about 88, 89. So it was clear that uh, the rules of the game will have to change. Article 8J, which was part of the convention, required that knowledge of the people will be taken with their approval. So we would we could change, we could start influencing the dialogue nationally and globally to some extent, though uh, the guidelines of UGC, University Grants Commission, or SSRC of UK, or National Academy of Science in US, still require people to be kept anonymous. The guidelines, social science guidelines are that you keep people anonymous. What should it be? It should be you acknowledge the people by name unless requested otherwise. If they want to remain anonymous, they will request you. Otherwise not. So this is how... Uh, yes, I have not moved the PPT. Prajit, I will move now. <laughs> yeah. so I'm, still, I'm still on the first page. So that's, then the question came. Then, then the question came... And I said it before, but I'll use it in a different context today. A change not monitored is a change not desired. A change, I wrote it in 84, 1984 in a paper. And this occurred to me that if you want to bring about change in institutions, change in the long drawn civilizational processes, then you must change the questions you ask. You must change the way you monitor the system. So the first question that we want to ask is, will exchange among the for between the formal and informal system we buy new rules of the game how do we do that so we once we asked that question things began to follow so as i have said this and i will repeat we started looking for the oddballs we started looking for crazy people we started looking for sometimes people who are part of the humor in the villages or slums people who did not follow the trend. These ducks are moving in one direction, this wouldn't. So basically, many times people say Honeybee Network is a network of oddballs. And you know, even in your network, even in your lab, many times there are students or there are colleagues who ask funny questions. 
who uh, who have a paradoxical way of thinking who will always ask opposite of what you are expecting and that's a good that is very good strength that is a very good skill but generally the students will laugh at it because they can't see the connection that this person has made in his or her mind of looking at things paradoxically from the opposite end is a very important point of in the innovation ecosystem i'll explain so we started looking for these and then we decided that this is the logo which was designed by the students of nid in a class on graphic design and then ye tumhe aaya kya aise aise aata please mute mute your so if a nameless faceless person comes in contact with the network gets an identity this is what we have been trying to do to give voice visibility and velocity let me explain a little bit here what is the meaning of voice what is the meaning of visibility and what is the meaning of velocity to the creative initially we started only with the informal sector slowly and slowly we also incorporated young students from the formal sector as i had mentioned to you we are going to have a meeting in next two weeks to decide this year's jati awards gandhi and young technological innovation award awards which are given for originality frivolity and social applications to phd msc students post graduate students 15 lakhs to 15 students life sciences or application in life sciences even if you are from the non life science background but your application should be so you may be in electronics but you have sensor is going to be used in diagnostic then it is a life science innovation so and then we have other disciplines of engineering metallurgy <clears throat> the computer science and uh, textile and whatever have you there we don't have money but we still give the same citation in the same function so and then there are appreciation awards so we started recognizing them in 2009 onwards and uh, we will come to that but our major focus 80% of our focus continues to be on the innovation from grassroots though in uh, of late we are also incorporating innovation for grass so if you develop a very affordable water filter you are doing innovation for grass but if you incorporate let us say the traditional knowledge which is uh, using coconut uh, frond or fiber it then to the blending of people's knowledge and your knowledge and that's very interesting that can be done very well so uh let's go further and see what are the lessons what are the steps we took for uh now the text the slides are moving you are able to see them isn't it anybody just tell me ashwini ashwin the slides slides are moving no sir it's just on the first slide still on the first slide yes sir yes Uh, what are you saying now? Are you saying ecosystem elements? Yeah. Is this is still and now is it no, changed? Change. Now? Yes, sir. Change, change. Yes. Change in. All right. I'm sorry. So I'm sorry. sorry. Yes. Sir. Okay. Okay. So this we change not monitored. The change not is that this I have discussed. I will not repeat. I shown you this picture, so I will not repeat this. And we showed you the the, the visual, uh, giving voice visibility and velocity. The voice means giving identity to the creative people. Visibility means to bring them on stage, to share their creativity with the rest of the country, rest of the world. So when we started the awards at the hand of the Honorable President Dr. Kalam started it, that was giving visibility to the awards. In fact, he started the tradition of presidential award, and then. and mrs pratibha patel continued and then she pranam mukherjee continued and the current president shri ramnath kovind ji also continues that so this was uh, a tradition that is started of giving visibility to grassroots innovations uh, we added a step thanks to shri pranam mukherjee's initiative mrs pratibha patel brought the exhibition to the present house and shri pranam mukherjee brought festival of innovation to the present house so from 2015 to 17 festival of innovation was organized in rashtrapati bhavan and in 18 it was called festival of innovation and entrepreneurship that was the last year when it was held in rashtrapati now it is held in and i have office or somewhere else but 
Till that time, it was a great tradition when innovators, 10 innovators were selected to stay as the guest of the of India. They will attend all the functions. Their chairs were kept in, if there's a civil, civil award ceremony or military award ceremony or any other major function, Rashpati one, these 10 people, innovators, children, young people, farmers, selected by a committee, uh, were invited to attend every function as a special invite. So they would be, they would see for a week that they stayed, 10 days, they, they stayed at Rashpati Bhavan, various activities and how different things took place. So uh, what I'm trying to say is that through this process, they were taken to various, to meet various cabinet ministers. So for instance, if somebody had an innovation in textile and uh, they will go to the textile minister and textile minister will then discuss and say, all right, he will call the commissioner handloom or he will call somebody else. Here is an innovation. Why don't you try to develop some scheme by which we can scale it up? It seems very interesting. So like that, there was a mechanism, thanks to the present office at that time, from 2015 to 2017, Sri Pramagaji took personal interest and ensured that the innovations will be leveraged, will be given velocity by connecting to the highest level of the government. So you're not going to a joint secretary or a secretary, you're going directly to the cabinet minister. The cabinet minister will call the other people and ask the innovators to share their stories. When the exhibition was organized, several people will come and see that, both from private sector and public sector. That also gave the opportunities for the creative people. There, we started inviting later on the students also and other professionals. So a standing wheelchair developed at IIT Madras, for instance, uh, Dr. Sujata, I think, was the faculty guide of that student, was invited there mm -hmm. and to, sh to showcase how uh, they have solved this problem. Or, for that matter, uh, Vikas Pandey from IIT Delhi, whose example I gave you earlier, who had developed a first and micro 50,000 rupees as against 9 lakh rupees, was also invited to show this. There were many such examples where farmers, children, and students were also invited. The show with their so that's how the Honey Network was trying to give voice, visibility, and velocity to the creative and innovative people. And then let me now share uh, what are the questions we have to ask when we create an ecosystem. Any question till now? I will stop it for a minute. Anybody has any question? So first question I will ask now to you is, we are creating an ecosystem for innovation. What is the first step? Obviously, where are innovations? How to search? How to find them out? Once you find out, how to document? And how do we know who is the original innovator? Because sometimes I'm using an innovative solution or innovative device in my field. You are passing by, you stop, you talk to me. But you can't infer that it is mine unless I explain to you or you ask me and you ask some neighbors of mine. So we were required, I mean, the system was developed that we should ensure that original innovator, the person whose idea it is, get the recognition, not anybody and not everybody. And then, of course, document them. So initially, when we scouted the innovation, we will not get too much detail, just a paragraph. But if, we, if the, while analyzing them, while doing prior art search, we found out oh, this idea seems good, let us, detail, let us do a detailed documentation. I'll share with you those forms which we developed in NIF at the time, earlier in Sashti and Gyan, and later in NIF. Uh, NIF is National Innovation Foundation, Sashti Society and Research, Society for Research and Initiative for Sustainable Technologies and Institutions, and Gyan is Gujarat Grassroots Innovation Augmentation Network. So there were three institutions that we created for different purposes, I'll explain. So first component of the ecosystem is searching innovation. Many of you, when you have to search for innovation, you will go to the web. But you must remember that most of the farmers don't have a smartphone, forget about internet. So how will their innovation be found on the web? You can't find them on the web. Then how do you find them? You have to literally walk to the villages. So we had a lot of volunteers, students, professionals, farmers who join hand. All of you can be a volunteer of NP Network and say, all right, sir, if we come across any good idea, we will share with you. You don't lose anything. 
but that person whose idea it is will get a chance to improve their idea if nothing else at least because recognize that idea that will give him or her encouragement to take the ideas forward so the search process involved invariably lot of voluntary action lot of work because there was no way a small organization at that time honeybee network was not even a legal organization it was just a network of like minded people policy makers students otherwise so how would they be able we didn't have resources we were working through our own resources our own resources our own savings there was no project there was no grant it was all voluntary so then once we started searching for innovator and documenting them then the question arose is it traditional knowledge or contemporary innovation of course it is true that traditional knowledge of one region can become innovation for another region and there are many examples i'll give you but some knowledge some practices may have evolved in recent past while others may have evolved in long past so we had to distinguish traditional knowledge from contemporary knowledge. then the next question came we have to build a system for validating the claim how do we know what you what the innovator is claiming is true or not so we have to then find a way in which there should be formal institutions part of the ecosystem so you will be happy to know dr mashelkar was csir dg at that time 2004 and the first agreement was signed with csir and i have on behalf of anibi network mou between the grassroots innovation ecosystem and the the largest network of labs in the country then came icmr indian council of medical research we signed agreement with icmr that was kathoch was dg at that time then icar indian council of agriculture research dr padma patra though that was much later but nevertheless they also so what are we trying to do in the ecosystem we are trying to bring the best of the formal system with best of the informal system and no compromise and no second order science the best science the most rigorous science must scrutinize the ideas of the people and if they say that it is good or better than the available solutions then they get recognition and further support some will get residential award some will get appreciation award and some will get just support but not award so that was natural and i mind you we gave award for such a long time and none of them was questioned by anybody in the world because a lot of rigor went into it so validation process was where scientists offered their help and i must add here something very interesting and i would you will be all proud of it not one scientist from csir icmr icr or for that matter other labs or universities charged for their time not one scientist some of them said i remember ncs nccs national center for cell science in pune that kundu said look i have got projects i don't care you you have a lead for cancer i have got a cell line i will do this scrutiny don't worry about it send send me the material he didn't even take the consumable expense there were many scientists like that why i am naming one there are so many who didn't take dr uh, uh sir what is name uh, samad dr samad from bombay veterinary college later he went to nagpur didn't he asked if i will get my master's thesis done on this problem why are you worrying you will get next year for before the next award function we had generally two year gap between the award functions so we will get your validation done master's student do one year the research work they will take it up and wonderful thesis were done on a claim of a veterinary medicine so large number of scientists practically all scientists did not charge for their time some scientists did not charge even for the consumables and that is a huge contribution i mean if you develop a project generally to dst or sir or wherever at least 25 lakh 20 lakh is a normal amount minimum amount so if you look at the claims we gave on an average let's say 70 awards or 80 awards multiply them for 20 years so 1500 awards multiply by 25 lakh or 20 lakh <coughs> each validation that would have been the cost that we would have to pay we didn't have money 
our total budget for first 10 years was 1 crore 80 lakh 1 crore uh, 1.8 lakh 1.6 crores that was all 400000 dollars 20 crores was the purpose only 8% interest on the reserve bank bond so we had only 1 crore uh, 600 1.6 that's it so validation was a great but then the question came came about value addition here we had difficulty the designers are very cost a few designers agreed to do at very concessional terms some charged their fees concessional fees but they did charge but that was very helpful i'll show you some innovations where designers made all the difference if you look at the original design and you see the modified design so much difference was made by the designers so that was next so what have i said search we developed a network for searching innovation documenting uh, finding out their contemporary relevance validating and valuing this was initial then we have to file patents for that mind you when we talked about patents for poor the world wouldn't believe everybody thought patents were instruments for large corporations for big business or institutional scientists even even scientists at that time did not file too many patents please remember it is during dr mashelkar's regime that tenure that the patent and publication parish was made into a mantra but before that even csir filed very few patents now there are about 9000 till last year so how to protect patents so we had to take help of the intellectual property right lawyers again lawyers did not charge for their time not one lawyer charged us for time professor gupta you are trying to help these people who nobody was otherwise help why should we charge you do it pro bono can you imagine now one patent for application some of you must have filed patent application you would know it generally costs about 2 and 1/2 to 3 lakhs rupees sometimes more for domestic patent international it may cost up to 10 lakh there was a friend uh, tom turano he was at that time part of uh, a company in boston he read an article in economist about our work he wrote to me can we help i said yes you can help us we want to file patent that was about 19 2002 to 2001 so the first three patent that we applied for were granted in 2003 if you go to google and you search uh, patents Mansukh Bhai Jagani, Mansukh Bhai Patel, and Bhanji Bhai, and USPTO Adaptive Agriculture Machine, and they were assigned to Swasti because they could do pro bono work for an NGO and not individual. So we said, all right. And we filed patents in India. We filed patents in US. They were granted. At latest count, more than twelve hundred patents have been filed using public money to create private right. with the help of ipr attorneys none of whom have charged for their time so our average cost was has been about 15000 at best 20000 for diagram for 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 sketches and all that which includes the fees that we pay to the patent office request for examination fees uh, for uh, revision anything that we have to do submission of additional documents amendment to the patent whatever things are required all of those fees we pay and in many cases for maintaining them also by the state using state funds so ipr is another example this ecosystem you would not find anywhere in the world mind you we didn't have a template we did not have a template there was no model of an if there was no model of honey bee network we were trying to build the model ourselves we were looking at the logical links in the innovation chain and as the question arose we had to build a link so when the question arose well shouldn't we protect the right yes we should how do we protect the right we have to file patents for plant right protection but uh, they can't write okay we will have hire the experts to write the draft and we will have the best forms so on and on and on suran and suran dk huja you know various forms in from north india south india west all of them practically offered to help us no, no nobody refused and that was a great help that was a great help uh then next issue was okay so you have filed the patent but patent by themselves don't generate any revenue 
as you know, hardly one to two percent or three percent patents are commercialized. On the whole, CSR CSIR has about eight to nine percent rate. Ours is also was about nine percent. So CSR has much better rate of commercialization than many other organizations in the country or outside. But globally, two to three percent is the maximum commercialization rate. Other patents don't get commercialized. So then. We had to do market research, we had to develop a business plan, and then we realized that we have to do some hand holding. So we set up Srashti in 93 and Gyan in 97. I'll come to that. And my colleague Anamika will explain to you about Gyan. She is the CEO of Gyan and she will explain how Gyan works. But let me just first explain the ecosystem. So the second part, the next part was doing market research, business plan. Finding out many times what happened, innovators are very headstrong, and she will give you examples where they would not easily take feedback. Some of you might have the same uh, nature. It's not easy for a very committed scholar, very passionate scholar to listen to the feedback. But that's very important. Without feedback, you don't go anywhere. You know, the ideas don't grow. So, yes, Sachin, uh, we were commercializing, meaning we were licensing. Licensing in two ways. One was uh, licensing to the small entrepreneurs. Most of our licenses were to small entrepreneurs or medium-sized companies, where the entire signing amount and the royalty was to go back to the people. Not one peso will remain with the foundation or with the network or with Gyan. Entire money will be going to the will be given to the innovator, because in any case, the institutions were supposed to raise funds from other sources for their own management. So uh, we also involved the students of business school, IMS students, my class of students would do some work on business development or finding out the licensing opportunities. We were, Anamika and I were teaching a course in uh, Norway. So the students in Norway Technological NTU uh, did some uh, prospecting for licensing technologies in Europe and Africa where they were working. So we were, we were trying also global opportunities for licensing, not just Indian opportunities. We also realized that most innovators don't want to become good entrepreneurs. Most innovators don't want to become good entrepreneurs. Uh, which Indian organization? Well, ST Microelectronics has very high rate of licensing. We have a data I could share with you in the next class. Uh, we have a data of all the universities, all the labs, all the companies, I mean, my top 10 companies, top 10 license, uh, all of that we will, I'll be able to share that with you in a while. Uh, but uh, ST Microelectronics uh, is a company, the sixth largest company of semiconductors based in Noida, Italian company with a subsidiary in India. They had very high rate of filing patents among in the private sector. In the public sector, CSIR had about at one time, 30% share. Now it's about 20% share in the entire R&D network of the country. CSIR has the largest share among the patent filing. The university system, our entire university system, doesn't have more than 2 to 3%, unfortunately. Even at that time, even uh, ISC had very little share. Now they have increased off late. But at that time, their share was very low. They were hardly um, talking about uh, early... Uh, 2010, 11, 12, we started this work of mapping the patents in the country. Until 2016, I updated my files, which I will share with you, or 2015 or 16. And uh, many of the top institutions did not have a very good record of filing patents, but nevertheless, CSIR was the best. Uh, much better than ICMR, much better than DBT, and much better than uh, ICR. There was no comparison. There was no comparison. And also licensing, as I said, CSIR had a licensing of the order of about 9 to 10 percent. But mind you, licensing is not only on commercial terms. You can also do a DIY licensing, open source licensing. You, you have heard about Creative Commons. You have heard about other form of license, GPL, general purpose license. So there are many models of, uh, in open software, you have GPL license. You have attribute only license. That means you have to attribute, but you don't have to pay anything. So there are different kinds of licensing models. Those of you who are interested, send me your questions and I'll uh, incorporate the answer to those questions in one of the sessions. That's not a difficult. I have been teaching a course on uh, SMIPR, Strategic Management of Intellectual Property Right, 
for competitive and collaborative advantage, both, not just for competitive. The next was, so I was mentioning that most innovators didn't want to become good entrepreneurs. So we had to find the linkage between innovation and investment enterprise. And I will leave that discussion to, to Anamika to take up. How to build the skills of the innovator to move on entrepreneurial path. Most innovators are uh, tinkerers and they don't uh, really think, see themselves as entrepreneurs. They, a customer comes, a farmer comes, they customize the solution to that person. They don't keep ready-made components and they will assemble them and keep. There is, there are a few in Chetal village, there, there are uh, a few uh, ma maker of uh, multi-purpose uh, toolbar or what you call as a small three-wheel tractor. They will keep some parts. I will leave that. Then we go to the next element of the system. Now you have got innovations, you have documented them, you have uh, found, done the prior art search, you have found the novelty, you have filed the patents, you have developed a business plan. But how will the innovator find money for taking them? So we thought just like you have uh, risk capital for biotechnology, for information technology, at that time it was just emerging. There was no major investment. The startup movement had not just really taken off at that time. I'm talking about 25 years ago. But we realized in 97, we realized when we had the first international conference on creativity and innovation at grassroots, we realized that there is a need for risk capital. So we wrote a paper supported to various finance secretaries of the government. And there was a good response. And then in 97, within an, uh, two or three months, the first March of 97, Gyan was set up in collaboration with Gujarat government. And uh, the board is very interesting, she will explain. So then uh, risk capital was invented. And uh, uh, from microfinance, we moved to Micro Venture Innovation Fund, MBIF. Uh, Gyan has MBIF now, earlier and I have had it in collaboration with SIDBI, Small Scale Industries Development Bank of India. This was the first fund in the world which will be given to the innovators under single signature. No guarantee, no obligant, no collateral. In microfinance, there's a group guarantee. People have to, group has to take responsibility for payment of loan given to an individual woman or man. Not in my MBIF. No guarantee. No collateral. No stamp paper. Can you imagine? And the first fund of about four crores plus one crore for transition cost was given in 2003. And more than 70% money came back. And the rest was because the enterprise did not succeed, product didn't work out, genuine losses. Nobody deliberately denied it. And all over the country, we had a small team of three, four people only. So naturally, we couldn't have gone everywhere. But on trust, through the volunteers, this money was invested. And Jan is investing it now in, in Kolkata, in Karnataka, in West Bengal, in uh, UP, in Bihar, all over the country we are investing in small innovations. I will let Anamika explain that. And then, how do you create wider awareness? Obviously, media took interest, and uh, I will show you a small film, uh, which Discovery made about four or five films and about 10 small snippets, uh, marvelous films. And now that system is working, I'll be able to show you one of them. There are actually all of them are worth seeing. A tree climber by Apachan, a washing machine, pedal driven washing machine by Remya Joss, if you go to the net, and a scooter by Dhanji Bhai Karai, uh, which he's a physically challenged person, lower limb immobilized. Somebody has to make him sit on the seat and then he can drive the scooter himself. Uh, unbelievable solutions that people have developed. And Discovery helped us to make beautiful films out of them, about 30 seconds, 40 seconds. And they became very popular. So a lot of, lot of visibility was created. Uh, Mega, you can keep on putting the links of these videos. Uh, or Anamika, if you have, you can share. Anamika, this uh, Apachan, A-double-P-A-C-H-A-N. Uh, they're all in the Honeybee Foundation or NIF. YouTube channel. Remya Jose 
आर एम वाई एंड धनजी डी एच एन जे आई धनजी वाई कर आई सो देर फॉर दिस फिल्म वर्किंग वेरी यूजफुल एंड यू माइट नो हाउ मेनी ऑफ यू सीन थ्री इडियट most of you must have seen that isn't it do you remember some innovations from that film anybody yes sir hello sir which one drone drone type 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 yes sir type, drone type, made type, by type on the chat type on the chat the what you remember okay drone what else correct correct floor mill and scooter very true and one more you know what these innovations were given by us from the hanvi network when vidu vinod chopra invited me and raju hirani vidu vinod brought chopra brought lunch from his home he said professor what can i give you which will make you feel special so i have got lunch from my home i said all right and then they narrated the whole story and they said here is an episode where we want to use innovation earlier we were thinking that when they go to the uh, when these fellows go in the car to meet this friend in ladakh at every turn they will find one or the other thing but that probably would have become that would have taken away the charm of finding innovation in that school so now there was a innovator in uh, merit who had designed a shearing machine for horses battery driven machine idris ha huh? mohammad idris mohammad idris idris you are right come on your memory is better i was losing the name so mohammad idris and then uh, the person in maharashtra what was his name the scooter with floor mill hai wo to hamare ha famous yeah. fellow इनोवेशन बिकेम everybody remember them you remember them it's just about 3 4 minutes or 5 minutes shot in the entire film of 2 and a half hours but practically everybody remembered those uh, two or three example and that the drone was of course from uh, ashish bhat and others uh, the uh, famous people now they were from it bombay they had developed this drone which could take off from hand but these two innovations were from the and even at and they had acknowledged in the end of course small acknowledgement they didn't give much money to the innovator just about 10000 rupees but that's okay at least this film which was a globally famous film uh gave him uh, subsequently you know there was a film on padman uh this fellow in madurai in tamil nadu uh, who developed the sanity napkin machine so and then there was a film on malayalam in telugu moruga Murugan. Ah, Murganandam, Murganandam, Murganandam. Yes. So uh, this was another way in which visibility was given to the company. So media wrote um, all the famous magazines, all the media. BBC created a film on the innovations. Uh, CNN did. Japanese uh, NHK did. All of them around the world. People were showing, showcasing this grass. It was something that was new to people. People didn't realize that. poor people can be rich in knowledge poor people can be rich in knowledge rich in creativity so it was getting attention it was getting attention it was making a point that don't be patronizing toward the poor don't think that you have to only solve problem for them now sonam wangchuk had nothing to do with the uh, film actually sonam is a good friend and he runs a organization called as sac mall but he had no role in the film he became famous because when he replicated another innovation of a ice stupa and his work in education is very good but uh, the, the wangchuk was another dog wangchuk who was from ladakh the, the character of wangchuk was different uh, nevertheless so okay so the wider awareness of the innovation was created by media i would say that of course we couldn't afford to give any advertisement please remember that we had no money 
honeybee newsletter was coming up in the meanwhile so honeybee newsletter if i can show you right here so for example as you can see here this is one of the issue of last year so we will and then there will be different innovations to be given in here uh, all of you will get a copy pdf copy of some of the issues uh, megha anamika will give you the suggestion with particularly the issues which have children ideas we should circulate and also which have gathi award and which have uh, gathi award and children idea and next issue will have the hbn pre also so those copies we can share with some of them so they will get an idea as to what this newsletter is doing this newsletter was coming out in different languages in telugu in malayalam in odia in hindi in gujarati tamil at one time and uh, kannada uh, and now starting in uh, gurumukhi and uh, kashmi urdu so idea was to reach people to people communication only through cross pollination in local language recognize respect and reward we mentioned about presidential award system uh, there is something interesting done uh when dr kelkar was the chairman of the 13th finance commission finance commission is the one which allocates which decide the formula by which the taxes collected by the central government is given to the states so central state allocation formula is worked by the finance commission so the finance commission visits all the states and meet the chief minister and listen to the leader of opposition and understand what kind of need the state has then they do calculation work out the allocation formula and so on so that was very interesting when he went for meetings he took a report and all of these are available on the net assam innovates bihar innovates jharkhand innovates punjab innovates so these books were prepared by the nif team and shared with every chief minister now i must admit that they did not make as much impact as we had hoped Uh, in the state policy but nevertheless it was a good gesture to elevate the awareness and give the recognition by giving uh, i did there were the each report each book has three parts innovation from punjab let us say innovation for punjab and innovation and the traditional examples so like that there were books created for all the states of india and they are all available on the net and uh, presented so that was another way in which the creativity the innovation was recognized i must admit, admit that the 13th finance commission did two more things first time in the history of this country district innovation fund was created so a crore of rupees was given to all the districts about 600 and odd districts at the time and uh, this fund i made the note for that there was a small distraction in the guideline and that distraction led to a lot of valuation of the fund it did not work for the way it was expected i consider it as a failure but the success is that it at least opened the mind that there is something called as innovation at district level and there must be funding for that the next finance commission continued this and increased the amount but uh, the focus has not yet been changed but hopefully it will change so district innovation fund was created and then center for innovations in public system sips was created at sk hyderabad these two things for that also we made a proposal and these two things were done as a part of the tri finance commission so let me go to the next and then take a break i'll just complete this then uh, mm -hmm. we'll break 5 minutes uh, open access databases were made and there were many databases some agyan has recently made with undp they will she will explain we also brought a uh, pursue policy and institutional changes this is something my friends all of you need to understand and learn the when you develop an innovation it may require some changes in the standards it may require changes in some policies it may require changes in some institutional procedures so it is not enough to make an innovation you should also pursue the changes in the appropriate institutions and or policies and that's very important you remember last time we discussed about the fourth light and many of you gave various examples and the blue light and then that but that will not work no individual can change it it requires 
surface transport ministry's approval it requires police approval of the police administration and municipal authorities and all of them have to agree for making adding a fourth light the traffic light so there are policy issues technologically it is a simple thing but policy wise and institutionally it is complex so if you want to develop a new technology for example many labs have developed covid diagnostic kits and some of them can work at room temperature they can take saliva not just nasal swab and uh, ccm they developed at room temperature by changing the rt pcr uh, step they have removed two steps so it becomes shorter quicker faster all of them will require icmr approval the controllers approval and then uh, of course after they getting the data on their reliability and so on so standards have to be changed recently you might have uh, read that icmr allowed the antigen test anti antigen antibody test as a home kit so i have been tweeting that it they allowed only my labs in pune to do that as a company but there are 25 30 other companies in the country who also make antigen antibody antigen test which is not very accurate as you know it hardly there are about 70% chances of correctness 30% chances of a mistake false negative is much more evident though positive is generally positive but negative can not be always negative so that is a problem with this test but nevertheless if you people want to do that test at their home same test that you do in the malls and public spaces they should have allowed other companies also they should not have opened this opportunity only for one company that is not fair so then somebody has to lobby for that and i have been trying to lobby for these other companies other startups that they should also be given a chance to participate otherwise there is a monopoly and monopoly is never good for innovation system you should have some competition we also developed g2g model grassroots to global model where we were trying to find global markets so we transfer technologies to kenya to zimbabwe to many other countries and prove that grassroots innovations can have global market we found inquiries from more than 60 countries we didn't go to them they discovered us we didn't advertise they found it on the net and wrote to us that they would like to have these solutions and of course they, you will also need to renew the ecosystem so that social and ethical capital keep on getting renewed uh, i will come to that so let us let us stop here and break for 5 minutes fitness break just have a break uh and then we'll have questions so 6:33 you will meet at 6:38 and then uh anamika will take over when it comes to jan's model and she will also explain the mbif model and other initiatives so please relax for a while 5 minutes break
All right. I, I hope everybody is back. Uh, Neha, any problem? You're not able to connect back or something? Neha, any difficulty? Okay, thank you. Uh, friends, I have uh, one request before we start with the discussion of the, I mean, uh, before I ask you any questions, uh, you should be able to also raise questions that let's start on time next time onwards. I mean, uh, I have done this experiment in my class. So I said, all right, if you come late, we will start the class five minutes late. And again, if you come late, then there is no solution to that problem. But no matter what time you fix, it's a matter of attitude. It doesn't really matter whether uh, you're really busy because you can plan your schedule in such a manner that at least 80 percent students should be in time. So if some are left because of some exigencies, because nowadays there's a very difficult time. Some of you have to look after your family, your parents, your children. I understand that. But otherwise, try to be on time. So anybody has any question to ask before we begin another next step? Anybody has any question? Any uh, question about how something happened or you need me to explain a little bit more? Yes, Ashwini. Go ahead. Uh, am I audible, sir? Yeah, 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 you are. Uh, mm -hmm. Am I? Have I switched on my network? My, my yes, yes, sir. Okay, okay go ahead. Uh, I just want to make a point that uh, to help the innovators uh, to continue with their innovations, I think they need a support that uh, somebody has to be the first buyer of their innovative products. So if uh, I, I think, if I'm not mistaken, in uh, Niti Aayog, they have this uh, Atal Innovation Mission. So they, they are trying to develop a scheme wherein the first uh, innovation of an innovator would be, would be bought over by the government ministries so that the innovator gets an encouragement and whatever investment he has made from his side, I mean, he is able to uh, make up for that. So that is that that can be a big support for those innovators. Ashwini, this is a very important point. I mentioned it to Dr. Vijay Raghavan and uh, Niti Ayo chairman also, that if you look at public procurement, it is called public procurement. If you look at public procurement from startups, leave aside the pandemic, situation is pathetic. If you look at various solutions that have been developed, very few, very few from the startups I'm talking about, not from the labs. Lab solutions have gone. Even NAL and many other labs have given solutions to the country and they have, these have been incorporated in the public programs. So that I'm not questioning at this moment, though I would say the share is much lesser than what it should be. But nevertheless, there are examples. But when it comes to uh, innovations by young entrepreneurs or for the matter grassroots innovators, hardly any public procurement. So you're right that uh, despite the amendment in the GFR, Government Financial Rules, uh, in 2018, yet not much success has taken place because the requirements of uh, tender size sometimes is 150 crore minimum turnover now. How can a startup have 150 crore for though they have a solution? So sometimes they have to become a supplier of another company which bids on their behalf or with their solution. And they will get much lesser share of the benefit because then this company will charge some amount for lending their name for the business. So there are all kinds of uh, unfortunate uh, problems, but you are absolutely right that public procurement is a very important driver of innovation all over the world, in our country, not yet. But point is valid. Atal Innovation Mission is a initiative of uh, Niti Ayo. It's a uh, it's an independent initiative, but managed and owned by Niti Ayo. And uh, it, it sets up tinkering clubs. It also has incubation centers, provides funding to the public systems and private institutions public school and private school for setting up tinkering lab, etc. 
Uh, yeah, go ahead, please. Go ahead. It's a little off topic, and I would not like to offend anyone who's present here. So uh, when uh, Ashwini sir was saying his point, he said that the innovator he needs the support, and someone should buy his product. If we being so educated, uh, you know, we are saying that innovator is he. We have that mindset. So it came out very unconsciously. He didn't think about that in that way. But why is a mind fed like this? You are that right. No, no, you have a point. You, you have. What is your name? Neha. Neha, you have an absolutely valid point. We should all be conscious of this. And uh, we, some of us are, some of us are not. But you are right. I mean, this is something that Ashwini will also be careful in future. His or her. Um, she so we have gender him. neutral terms we should use it so if yes. because we can bring the change if we will be conscious enough we will pass the, this thing down no you have a point you have a point we all agree with this no debate on this we have to be careful I must tell you something now that you have raised this issue and I will be making confession an honest public confession because on this lecture is on YouTube and everybody should hear this what I am going to say now you know, with all our efforts, with all our sensitivity, with all our inclusiveness, we have very small share of award that have gone to women innovators. The paradox is like this. <clears throat> when it comes to Ignite Award and now, which is called Ignited Mind Award, United Mind at Honeybee.org, which we give to the children, Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam Ignited Mind Award. When it comes to award to children, the share of women is around, the share of girls is around 40, 45%, sometimes 50%. As they grow, and you all are evident, have witness to that process, their share keeps on declining. And that is very unfortunate. Now comes the problem at our end. Why we are not able to scout innovations by women as much as we should? And there is, a, I think there's a session on that. I shouldn't be on the discussion on gender issues today. But I would only say that there are several historical and institutional factors which have led to this. One major weakness, major mistake or major inadequacy of our network is that we do not have too many women volunteers or women researchers. In cultural terms, it makes a difference when women talk to women. So Anamika wrote a paper and she should talk about it. Uh, a role reversal, she developed it. She published this paper two years ago in Bird Development, one of the very prestigious journal of social science, on uh, women uh, not as beneficiaries, but as uh, provider of knowledge, uh, as participant. Now, that's a paper where she's shown how women's knowledge can be very critical in climate adaptation and so on and so forth. So you have a point that if we tap their knowledge, then we realize how valuable it is. And in many domains, but otherwise, you are right that uh, we should be conscious. So we proceed, shall we proceed further with this? Uh, okay. Uh, somebody has put down the requirements for public. Uh, you're right. You're right. This three-year thing now has been waived in GFR rules. So if you don't have three-year experience, you can still uh, contribute. That problem has been solved, but the turnover problem has not been solved as yet fully. And in any case, whatever they have done, they have not yet uh, procured too many. So if you have a diagnostic kit, uh, as I said, leave aside the pandemic. Even in the pandemic, many companies which were using Chinese imported kit components for the diagnostic kit, they got the major orders. The indigenous manufacturers who had almost 80, 90 or 95% uh, indigenous components, they did not get as many orders. So there is a bias, even today, there's a bias in our procurement towards uh, companies and startups which are using Chinese components or imported companies. Uh, why I say further, I was talking to an entrepreneur in biotech sector, and he, they make regions for various uh, biotechnological experiments and trials. And they said something, and don't mind it, and you can correct me if I'm wrong. They said, sir, even CSI labs and DBT labs don't buy our regions as much as they should because they think that Sigma and other companies 
are only able to produce high quality reagent, whereas our reagents have been tested against them by the public authorities and proven to be as good as they are, and yet they don't have faith in our reagents. So the innovators who are working in indigenizing many solutions, developing their own processes, are facing huge hurdle, even from our R&D community. I'm not talking about private sector, I'm not talking about government, I'm not talking about anybody else. Even Many of you, when you have to buy chemicals or reagents for your experiments, you prefer uh, an international company rather than an indigenous provider. Is that right? Am I am I exaggerating the problem? Do you agree with me? Yeah, thank Hello, you. Sir, but Deepika, you? Sanju. Shouldn't it change? I mean, I went, I would say you ask for test reports. You ask for complete parity with imported chemical. I have no problem with that. But once you get that report and you are satisfied that it is at par, then patronize our manufacturers. I mean, how else will they grow? Why would they do all the R&D to indigenize these solutions and these processes? I mean, I have done this study. I've talked to about two dozen entrepreneurs in biotech sector in the last six months. I must tell you, I'm very pained by their experience in terms of uh, the support they get from our own internal R&D institution. Because if you buy, they can say, oh, we supply to CCMB or we supply to uh, so-and-so lab. And that becomes a kind of a credibility building method. So then the other companies, other uh, entrepreneurs will also buy because they will say, oh, if they are, you are supplying to CSR, then must be good. So you, in some sense, your orders can become a verification and authentication uh, of the quality. No, it is all right. I mean, I know that Sigma has a much wider uh, range, but my point is that wherever uh, biotech entrepreneurs, and I have talked to many, have developed regions for, let's say, diagnostics, then also we still insist on buying the foreign uh, I mean, imported chemicals. I'm just saying that if we want industry in our country to promote, and if some of you who are doing research in synthetic chemistry or other fields want to set up your own enterprises, then you would need to be encouraged. And if you need to be encouraged, your own colleagues have to encourage you. Your own seniors and juniors have to encourage you. So that was the only point. Coming back to the issue of how did we do that? And we had no model to follow. We had no model to follow. There was no country in the world which had a grassroots innovation ecosystem. The word grassroots innovation didn't exist. The word frugal innovation didn't exist. None of, there was no discussion on this word. Innovation was not a conversational issue 30 years ago, please understand, or even 20 years ago. We started from that situation. Uh, all right, Sachin, if you are talking of that problem, then you must, of course, complain to them or advise them. And maybe you should help them in improving the quality of their regions. So anyway, coming back to this issue. So, so this is how we started. 88, 89, Honeybee Network started. 93, we started. 97, Jan, 2000, National Innovation Foundation. And uh, I will only go up to Srishti because then I will lead to an Anika takeover and then maybe I'll supplement how and I was set up. So Honeybee Network, I have explained to you, it was a, it is a, some friends got together, my students and my teachers. One of the things I learned early in my life was that if you involve in any initiative, you are one, at least one teacher and one student, you can't cheat. You can't cheat yourself and you can't cheat them. You can't cheat your student and your teacher at the same time. So we build a system whereby we should have checks on our own on value system. You know, no matter how honest you are, but you still need some checks and balances where you create a structure, you create this system where you bring people who can ask questions to you without hesitation. I can tell you one thing, and this is my life's experience, that if you really want to grow as a leader in your discipline or in your profession, you must have some friends who are a pain in your neck, who argue with you a lot, who are dissenters. 
it is not easy to pull on with such people. They really harass you sometimes. But the advantage is that truth, or even if a burden of truth, it may not be complete truth, but even a burden of truth comes out quickly. You don't have to make a case for it. You don't have to be polite. Such people will blurt out the, their feelings right at your face. And the feedback cycle becomes shorter. Quickly, you get a feedback if you're going wrong or if you're not doing something right, if there's a better way of doing things. So having dissenters in your ecosystem, personal ecosystem, your professional ecosystem, is a fundamental need for you to become a good leader. I don't know if any good leader, good leader. There are leaders. Good leaders are those who keep dissenters in their group. If you don't have dissenters, you become arrogant. And we know the consequences of arrogance. You commit very huge mistakes. You may have power, you can do these mistakes, but society eventually will suffer if we do not have dissenters in our network. And good leaders always do that. So Honeybee Network looked at different verticals, education innovation, technological innovation, cultural creativity, and of course, institutional innovation, common property institutions. And then we also got into the food, biodiversity, of course, was our first big, uh, uh, focus. Uh, biodiversity based knowledge system and uh, yes that's a good question that's a good question how did it sustain how did it sustain for 30 years this question often gets asked within India and outside India when other universities discuss this and my answer is I didn't sustain it I may have contributed to sustenance but it is people who joined and sometimes they were more selfless than me and that is a credit to them. Plus, you know, I forgot to mention one thing. Whenever we documented innovations, we also documented the name of the scout. So it is, we were trying to acknowledge as many stakeholders in our work as possible. Once I did a study in 85, 1985, 56, when I came back from Bangladesh, I was uh, having a lot of ethical problems in my mind. So I did a study on personal communications. How often do we cite? personal communication in our papers and I took some journals in India and some journals from abroad and I found that though there was not a great deal of difference in India and abroad in the journal that I selected, nevertheless we in India have less is we have a weaker or lesser tendency to cite personal communications. So if somebody brought a reference to my notice, I can say that look, I didn't know this reference, somebody brought it to my notice, I think or if somebody brought out a point which is very critical for my work, my theory, my explanation, then I put a footnote that so-and-so. I'm grateful to so-and-so for bringing this issue out. So, yes, some journals may not accept personal communications, but many journals do. And it's a good practice to my mind, even if it has to be removed later on, in some cases, under compulsion of the editing, editorial advice, I would still say that it is good to, in the draft that you circulate to the friends around, you should have. It is a good thing to mention. So one of the things that helps Honeybee Network sustain was we were very, I would not say liberal, we were very uh, accurate or, or, or we were very precise in terms of acknowledging the help that we received. As I told you about contribution from scientists, I told you about contribution from IPR lawyers. These are lawyers are private companies. Why would they do pro bono work for the network? Well, for the cause, they shared the cause. Designers for that matter, or and many other people helped us. Many other people helped us. Media for that matter. I never went to any media. They were seeking stories. Even today, they seek stories, and when they need some input, they will come. So I would say that all these factors help the voluntary nature of the people who joined. People gave 10 years of their life, 20 years of their life. People gave uh, their own, uh, I mean, most of the volunteers, not most, I would say 90%, 99% of the volunteers don't get paid by the network. They work through their own resources. Sometimes very small cost we may have shared, but most of the things they do themselves. So there was a lot of, the, the, the voluntary element was uh, very deeply embedded. Genuine volunteerism, I would say. And the fact that we were Gandhian in our orientation where we believed that our work should reach the poorest. We had show the Atras, I will tell you later, from 1988 onwards, we started walking in different parts of the country. 
summer we went to hot places, winter we went to cold places. So let me come. So 1993, we set up uh, honeybee, this uh, Sashti. Now, mind you, Sashti was set up on 1st June and I had only a small grant. Uh, I had taken leave from IMA for two years and they said, what will you do? And I said, I will work in the, at the community level. I want to spend time with innovators and uh, with my other commitments, I won't be able to do that. And uh, as they say, I got a lot of struggle. I, normally, nobody takes leave from IMA to work with the communities. I mean, they will take leave to work with an international university or uh, institute or a company or someone. Nevertheless, they granted me leave after a lot of struggle. And then I got this Pew Award, which was $150,000 at that time. And only one and a half page report every year was to be given for three years. That was very helpful from the University of Michigan. And that helped me to take up a lot of other steps in terms of studying the IPR system in different countries, uh, looking at building the network in different parts of the world. All of those things could happen during those three years. And a lot of research was also done at that time. So that was helpful. Sashti is a non-profit organization. It has uh, Dr. Mashilkar chairs the management board and Dr. Gagandi Pang and uh, many distinguished scholars are Dr. IIT Delhi director, Dr. Ramgopal Rao. They are all members of the board governing board now. And uh, it has partnership with biotechnology, Pyrec, Biotechnology Industry Research Assistance Council, DBT. It organizes this Biotechnological Innovation Ignition School, which is currently going on. It organizes summer school, which Gyan organizes for Polytechnic and ITI students, and Sashti does it for degree colleges. It also organizes traditional food festival, Satvik, where we invite uh, food formulators, food entrepreneurs, and try to uh, develop respect for organic and also for nutritional food. Uh, so all of these things Sashti has been doing. It also has a small incubator. Yes, uh, Bionest incubator with support of Bayrak Bio and Gyan has an incubator supported by Gujarat government, but works all over the country, Gyanastra. So I'll stop here and let Ananika take over from there. Ananika, are you ready? Ananika? Let me see. Anamika, are you online? Or... Yes, sir, I am. So are you starting from here or should I see the triangle? Well... Yes, so, uh, no, so I will uh, first share uh, a video. All right, please go ahead. Yeah. So there are two videos which I'll share and then after that we will uh, take the discussion uh, forward. So you you should have the sound. I was told today, Mega, by that I, we should make the sound option on. Then only the sound comes. I learned it today. No, so that. these are these are from YouTube, so we won't have that problem. But you know, there is a more button. There is a option of sound. You please switch it off. You are host. You can go ahead. Let me let me just see first. Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you see? Not yet. Okay, just give me a moment. Yeah, now is it visible? Yes, ma'am. Yes. This is just a brief, and then we will have another video, and then. No sound, ma'am. You have to put the sound button on in the more button. You go to the more button in your option. There is a sound sharing. You have to click Just that. Give me a share screen. Ma'am, share screen. Mein jayenge, na, pe left yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Abara? Yes. Abara? yes, yes. Make it full screen. Yes, yes.
so this was just a brief uh, about like our uh, work in the past one and a half years but let me share with i think people who were saying about uh, gender inclusiveness in the innovation ecosystem you might uh, okay just just hang on. you might uh, understand professor's concern because he himself has spoken about the problems that we face when we were uh, we wanted to get information about women's innovation and their knowledge system so just give and after this video we will uh, open uh, for some questions and we also have a presentation and uh, followed by a small activity maybe 15 minutes activity where we will participate and see what if we can uh, do things that we uh, in the class uh, that we do at gyan just give me a moment Gujarat Grassroots Innovation Augmentation Network, that is GYAN, is a developmental organization registered as a trust and society in India since 1997. It also has a Section 8 incubator company called GYAN Astra, that is GYAN Association for Supporting Technology Research and Entrepreneurship. The major activities of GYAN are scouting, documentation, and dissemination of grassroots innovations and also innovations for grassroots, providing handholding support to innovators and connecting them with entrepreneurs and investors to form Gyan's golden triangle of creativity. More than three decades ago, when Honeybee Network started to tap and map grassroots innovations from all over the country and different parts of the world. It was recognized that it is not enough to document the innovations. We need to convert innovations into enterprises, whether social or economic. But there was no framework for that. Gyan, Gujarat Grassroots Innovation Augmentation Network, therefore was set up in 97, essentially as the world's first incubator for converting innovation into enterprise and reduce the transaction cost of innovators, of entrepreneurs and investors. All the three of them don't know each other. Innovator doesn't know where the investor is, investor doesn't know where the entrepreneur is, and entrepreneur doesn't know often where the innovator is. Conducting multi loci on-farm trials of grassroots technologies and also augment biodiversity through nutrition gardens in schools. Building capacity of different actors and stakeholders in the innovation ecosystem at both national and international level. Its program, Gyan Nidhi, focuses on innovative projects of polytechnic students and as well as ITI students. Last year, Gyan has helped UNDP India to make a database of Brazilian technologies for and from grassroots, which is available in GRID undp.org.in. It also co-hosts a database of 0.9 million abandoned U.S. patents to encourage distributed entrepreneurial opportunities. During this process of converting innovation into enterprise, we faced many challenges. And one of the challenges was that women whose knowledge often was not tapped as much as the men's knowledge was tapped, remained a very small part of the ecosystem. So how do we challenge that? How do we overcome that problem? And one of the experiments that we did was to take the help of self-help group members. And this experiment was done in Kerala, where we would try to document the knowledge of the women when they meet in their monthly meetings uh, about various problems that they would solve, whether for childcare, for processing food, for storing grains, or for various other activities and then see whether some of this knowledge will lend itself to convert into enterprise. Gyan has now been also operating a macro venture innovation fund in collaboration with SIDBI, Small Scale Industries Development Bank of India, to provide risk capital under single signature, no co-obligant, 
no group guarantee something which is fundamental in the macro finance the transition is from micro finance to micro venture finance if risk capital is so critical for biotechnology for information technology wouldn't it be equally critical for small grassroots innovators so this is the concept that we pioneered that under micro venture innovation fund the resources will be given to the innovator who has shared all his or her knowledge with us they trusted us we should trust them and in this process we have created this new framework of micro venture innovation fund if you make money give it back if you fail we have also failed as a supporting organization because we couldn't carry forward your innovation to the market as well as we should have gyan does not focus only on economic enterprises it also focuses on social enterprises on ecological enterprises on educational enterprises and we try to promote innovations in various sectors it is important also to understand that not all entrepreneurs would be able to recover the entire cost of the product or service that they provide from the users there are many disadvantaged people in the our society who may not be able to pay the full cost of full service it is here that the role of state becomes very important to underwrite this cost so that disadvantaged people are not disenfranchised from the ecosystem for availing the innovative products and services jan in that sense is a pioneer in terms of uh, bringing the three actors together but also influencing the public policy it has a very strong cooperation with UNDP India and UNDP global and has continued to provide support has organized uh, online courses particularly missed management of inclusive innovation for social transformation which has now reached uh, about 90 innovation UNDP innovation acceleration labs in 109 countries gyan in that sense really tries to link grassroots with global any questions so far about our work or we start with the presentation sir yes yeah sir you did mention about micro finance and micro finance venture so if you see micro the dynamics venture. of micro finance in india you get interest rate at more than what the uh, state bank gives or something so how this micro finance are beneficial like in the long run uh, we have read report from sadan and all so but their interest rates are pretty high about 10% and whatever so how sir like now we can tackle this problem because this is a problem coming like now to buy working capital or to buy any uh, machineries also uh nitin uh, sir before uh, sir professor professor you yeah because in micro finance the rate of interest can go up to 24% not 10% it sir i have seen 28% people giving loan like not yes, farmers yes yes so but 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 in micro venture finance it was 5% the loan that gyan has given only 5% which is very nominal amount of interest and again as i said if people don't make money they don't return so there are three differences in micro finance and micro venture finance three key differences one is the interest rate second is the group guarantee which is in necessary in micro finance without group assure a group approving your eligibility for loan you would not get a loan in case of micro venture innovation fund you don't need anybody's approval you anybody support group support alone you can get it and third is that it is a risk fund micro finance is for goods and services for which market already exists micro venture finance is for goods and services for which market does not yet exist and innovation for which is not yet proven in the marketplace it may fail it may succeed that's why it is called risk fund so micro venture innovation fund is a institutional innovation if i can call it that way nowhere in the world you would have used the i mean world bank and asian development bank and all the other development organization still have not incorporated this concept they only talk about micro finance they have not realized that a person poor person at a stage after having developed some business for a while would like to try some new ideas when they try new ideas they need risk capital plus within here uh, we 
though we know about the innovation, but the market is very unsure, uncertain. So uh, this is basically a risk fund. So that, as Professor uh, said, and I'm going to repeat, uh, we don't need any guarantee, no complicant, no nothing. It is, the only guarantee is of the innovation and we trust the innovator because when the innovators shared these innovations with us or their knowledge with us, they never charged us anything or they never, they trusted us. So it is a kind of a reciprocal relationship with our innovators. And uh, so far we, ha we have been like the last fund was with NIF and we were able to recover around 75% of the money. Um, and yes, many of them, of course, which didn't take off, didn't take off. So uh, we are basically, uh, we, are, we are talking about things which are very uncertain, risky, and the risk increases more when people are, mar are uh, economically at the border side, they're marginal. Plus, if you, if you uh, because the uh, you, you, you have, for some time you have been, uh, let me switch on the video, yeah. So for some time you have been now talking about process innovations. So these innovations are actually made as an answer to an unmet existing unmet need, right? And most of the people, they don't even know that they have made something new. We go, something is facing the... Somebody was saying something? Yeah, go ahead. This was by mistake. Yeah, go ahead. Yes. So, uh, yes, for the innovation before granting. Now, um, so we have a criteria on which we select the innovations first. So there are three levels of uh, filtering. First is like people who have scouted. They kind of try to do a prior art search. We, we sit together and we look at the market. We uh, look at the patents and see if this is going to be really new, right? Novelty is one thing. Second is affordability. So even if a, a similar innovation or a similar product is there, but this product or innovation is available at a very marginal cost, then we include them. Third is also a gender inclusiveness and also uh, uh, assistive technologies. So people who are otherwise left out, excluded, if they are addressing their needs, we take them up. Uh, fourth is, of course, uh, some kind of a market assessment. And uh, we try to speak to the people and if the innovator has been able to sell a couple of pieces to somebody, just hang on my, just give me a second. So uh, if they have been able to, so we try to collect their feedback and also assess what kind of improvements the innovator is thinking of making and our engineers and our people uh, and our experts sit and uh, discuss what are the feasible iterative iterations that are possible. And uh, the, for, for us, scalability is there in the metrics, but at a, it is not given uh, the more, like the most of the percentage is not there. I mean, it is not the heaviest of the all the criteria that we have. So uh, this is basically how we first filtered the uh, innovation. Then there is an expert committee meeting. And after that, we have a meeting with the with a, 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 a committee meeting, uh, which we call primary uh, um, review uh, committee. Yeah. So uh, where we speak to the innovator and we try to understand the next steps, and this is it. So that's how we go about uh, MBI. Due diligence is take uh, is taken to ensure that uh, money reaches uh, for whom it is given. So it is the innovator always for us, uh, and uh, uh, and most of our like our balance sheets and our, all are on the net. So you can always check. Um, and uh, about we also like it is not when you talk about grassroots innovations or working with grassroots innovators, you cannot leave everything like making, uh, if you, like Professor said, most of the innovators are not good entrepreneurs. So we try to see partners who can help them. 
So uh, we try to engage with existing entrepreneurs or new entrepreneurs, some scientists, some professors who can help them. Uh, I will share a couple of examples where different people in the ecosystem have helped our innovators and they have uh, done some marvelous job. So uh, any more questions, please? Uh, one other question Ashini raised was, what percentage of innovations are granted uh, so, under the uh, yeah, so uh, because like for the first round, we had one, we had uh, scouted about 150 innovations out of which the first cutoff went on to about 30. And by the time we processed internally, it was 12 and finally nine people received the, uh, yeah. So that is how, because most of the thing we try to uh, do ourselves so that our uh, people who are scouting they and they are talking to the innovator, they also um, get a chance to assess and then of course we have a successor there. And also it, it is very, so we have a meeting every month and generally after the meeting, three or four days, we for the last uh, one, we had a little bit of problem because of the pandemic situation. For Silvi office, uh, their people for fell sick. Most of our office fell sick to all together. So we had a little bit of problem, but otherwise it is uh, within a week or 10 days most. Um, uh, in fact, we, we uh, wanted to process this as early as possible so that the innovator doesn't lose out on the time because innovators are very impatient. Like Professor probably had taken a session on inertia and uh, that is one thing that innovators do not have. <laughs> they're very impatient. Or uh, they will call you at like 11 o'clock at night and ask you about things, about things that they have been doing, things that people are saying. So it's not a nine to five job as such. So there, our innovators are there, uh, are people who will probably wake up at seven and say that. So I, I was thinking hello, about hello, this variation. Hello, hello. hello? Yes, Ashish. Can you listen to me? Yes, Ashish. Uh, please, you can speak in Hindi, so I can understand. Yes, so what do we do? We will try to speak in both languages. We will speak in Hindi and Hindi will speak in English. Because I, I assume that there will be people who... Can you not... speak Hindi? If you can speak English. I can speak in English? Yeah. Uh, okay. Now you I can speak English. I'm told you ki aap thoda hindi mein bol doge to can i understand ha theek hai theek hai theek hai bilkul bilkul main koshish karungi do main bengali hu to meri hindi bahut zyada achhi to nahi hogi aur i can understand ha na na theek hai aur koi agar aur koi aapki help karna chahe to probably aap ek one to one chat mein bhi explain kar sakte hain if you want to help ashish you can maybe explain bata do bata do Key points, uh, बता दो, key points, बता दो. हाँ. ये किसके बारे में सर? ये जो MBIF का प्रोसेस था अभी. हाँ. पहली बात कि भाई हमने 150 ideas लिए, 150 में से 30 किए, 30 को 12 किए, 12 में से फिर 9 को फाइनेंस किया. तो मतलब एक काफी फिल्टरिंग होती है. दूसरी बात बताई थी कि भाई जो माइक्रो मेंचर इन्वेशन फंड है, जो रिस्क फंड है, ये जब वो सैंक्शन हो जाता है तो उसके एक दा आठ दस दिन के अंदर उसको रिलीज कर देते हैं हमारे पास फंड है उसमें से हम रिलीज करते हैं एक कमिटी के पास सैंक्शन होने के बाद में जनरली कोई ज्यादा दिक्कत तो नहीं होती है लेकिन अभी हाल में पेंडेमिक की वजह से थोड़ी सी डिले हुई है और तीसरी बात कभी कभार हमारे कभी हमारे लोग बीमार पड़े कभी सामने लोग बीमार पड़े इसीलिए अदरवाइज कभी इतनी दिक्कत नहीं हां सर बोलिए तीसरी बात आपने बोला कि जो इनोवेटर्स हैं जो नवसर्जक हैं उनको उनका कोई समय नहीं होता कब बात करनी वो लोग सरकारी व्यवस्था के हिसाब से नहीं चलते ना उनको तो लगता है ये हमारे लिए कर रहे हैं तो हम इनको कभी भी फोन कर सकते हैं कह सकते हैं अपने दिल की बात और वो अच्छी बात भी है वो अपन, हम जब उनके घर जाते हैं या उनके यहाँ रुकते हैं कई बार तो खाना खाते हैं उन्हीं के साथ तो वो उनको भी हक बनता है कि जब वो हमारे यहाँ आए तो हम उसको ही सम्मान दें जो उनको मिलता है मुझे याद है कि जब हमने शुरू किया था नाइन्टी में उन्नीस में तो हमने कहा था किसी भी इन्वर्टर को ऑफिस में मत बुलाना उनके घर पर सारी सर्विसेज सारी सुविधाएं पहुंचनी चाहिए क्योंकि तो हमारा मकसद ये था कि यार सभी दफ्तरों में लोग आग के तंग हो जाते हैं एक बार में सारी बात नहीं पता चलती कई बार जाना पड़ता है तो ये सब व्यवस्था बदलनी है इसलिए हमने कहा कि आप उसको बुलाओगे नहीं आप उसको तो फॉर्म कोई भरवाओगे नहीं 
क्योंकि उसको आता नहीं फॉर्म भरना आप भरो उसका फॉर्म जो भरना है तो आपको जानकारी चाहिए आप पूछो लिखो और आज भी उनके जो प्रपोजल होते हैं वो ज्ञान की टीम बनाती है वो नहीं बनाते प्रपोजल उनको आता ही नहीं प्रपोजल बनाना उनको तो रसीद लेना उनसे अकाउंट लेने में बड़ी दिक्कत आती है कई बार क्योंकि वो लोग खर्च कर देते हैं बाद में कागज पर लिखे दे देते हैं अब आप समझो अगर लाख तीन लाख चार लाख रुपया आपने दिया किसी को तो थोड़ा सा ऑडिट के लिए तो थोड़ा हिसाब रखिए होगा तो हम उसे उनको अनुरोध करते हैं कि आप ओरिजिनल बिल रखिए अपने पास हम आपको समझाएंगे कैसे उसको लिखना है जहां बिल नहीं मिलते वहां आप अपना ऑथोराइज करके आप, आप उसको वो कर दो सर्टिफाई कर दो कि भाई मैंने ये खर्चा किया इस काम के लिए इसके लिए मेरे को बिल नहीं मिला आप गलत बिल तो बनाना कभी भी कभी बिल सोचना मत जो सच्चाई है वैसे लिख दो हम उसको स्वीकार करवा लें आगे से झूठ का लिख के देना पड़े तो वो नौबत ना आए उसके लिए वट वी डू की इफ दे गिव अक्लेन एट वैल्यू कि अगर उन्होंने लिख के दिया है तो उन्होंने सही दिया है तो भरोसा कोई भरोसा कैन नेवर बी लाइक सिक्सटी परसेंट सेवेंटी परसेंट और एटी परसेंट इट इज आइर अन और अगर आपको भरोसा क्योंकि उन्होंने भी जब आपका इनो, आपको इनोवेशन दिखाया समझाया बताया यूज करने दिया उन्होंने आपसे कुछ नहीं पूछा सो so, हाँ सर बोलो सर आपका आपका वॉइस म्यूट है पर मुझे पता Other student, other other students would like it in English now. Yes. Okay. So uh, I I said that uh, trust is never like fifty percent, sixty percent, seventy percent. It's either or all. So if they have trusted us while sharing their innovation, I guess even when their ideas, uh, things that probably are proprietary of of proprietary value, IPR value, they will share. And so when they trust us, we also. need to trust them so at times because we are all bound by rules and regulations and mandates so uh, if an audit because the auditor will question us uh, they will need bills and like professor said at times there is like a person is in a in a rural uh, setting and he has paid some uh, some money to the labor so he cannot get a bill in that case we we get a declaration from the innovator and uh, and we try to do it uh, uh, regularly i mean not we don't ask like we don't wait for them to pile up things and do because otherwise it it, it is it becomes very unmanageable so uh, they will give us in uh, like they will just write down the expenses where there is uh, they cannot get a bill and we trust uh, them so this is uh, any more questions or i can because we i think we have a little time left so i will just straight away post three questions and all of you can participate you can either uh, reply on the chat or if you have something very interesting to share you can unmute one yourself. of the question one of the question is and i think we should i should answer this question the herbal products that we had developed including herbave herbave it is developed by troika pharmaceuticals so we don't manufacture that But Trika Pharmaceutical does it, and what you are saying is you could not get it, or you got it. Uh, trying to see the point. Uh, did you did you find it, or you did not find it? Who is there? Uh, busy? No, not busy. Can you can you ask the question? Busy? I am not able to see. Busy? Can you raise the question that you have? Or somebody else who asked the question about the cream. Please unmute yourself and speak up. Uh, you did not find. Okay. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. Go ahead, Monica. Uh, yes, sir. Oh, uh, sir, yeah. actually, yeah. My question was mainly like uh, many a times, like the innovative product. which are being developed in india they are not able to reach uh, consumer market so right. like uh, when we right. are able to talk to like uh, uh, like i uh, search for herbave so online i can see okay it's available but when i try to procure it so nowhere it was found and now another example is regarding co vaccine so it's a, it's something which is uh, developed in india 
but when we look at the market right now there are a lot of shortages and you know it's not available in uh, most of the hospitals so sir how can we uh, you know improve on that or your views it's on that it's a very good point is a very good point you know once one of my dream which has not yet been fulfilled is that uh, you have seen those uh, panda shops of world wildlife fund you know where you have t-shirts you have cups those who are conservator of nature would know that there is a whole chain of similarly there are discovery shops discovery channel shop where in us and many other countries so where you can go and get things or body shop some of you might have seen at the airport body shop which was uh, nita rodic had set up that company now it has been taken over by some others and she would procure herbal materials from latin america make products and sell it at the costiest real estate airports land is the costiest in the world and there she had shops where she was selling products made out of the knowledge and resources of the indigenous people in latin america so there are some who have succeeded in doing that we have not succeeded so far i must admit and we do not have a network of shops in every city major cities where you can go and find all the innovative shops but some day i'm sure it's going to happen that you will have a special uh, showcases where latest innovations that have been developed by grassroots innovators or by labs will be available for for somebody to view because all said and done is seeing is believing i mean you don't want to only see things on online you also have a feeling of a touch and feel so your point is completely valid and uh, i can only say that it's a dream that we will be able to take up some day but uh, Uh, yes. Uh, do you want me to show the HBN Priya uh, presentation? You want to talk about the awards, Anamika? So, uh, or you can uh, show it. I can. Uh, but I have. To... No, we can probably share in some uh, because it's seven thirty now. I need to just uh, give them a brief about the ahead, uh, three ahead. technologies. Yeah. Uh, so um, let me just share this. So what I am doing is I am sharing three technologies. But this and question about who is eligible, who is eligible for support under MVF? MVF is open to anybody in the country. But so it has uh, it has to have a uh, application at Grassroots. Yes, so it is right. either for or from Grassroots. Correct. So. Um, so for people who want to. work with grassroots innovators uh this is an example where a student from nit he was uh, full screen full screen ek minute sir ha ab hua kya yeah okay ha uh, yes yes so a student from germany alexander he worked for 6 months with mansoor bhai uh patel so he was making a cotton stripper this is a stripping machine for uh, separating the lint of cotton lint from the bolls uh, in surendranagar district most of uh, surendranagar district this variety is grown and uh, the so it is different from bt cotton as in the when the bolls are harvested the lint is still stuck with the shell and they have to be removed uh these are if you you can see the photo is self explanatory but if i explain more then of course my question will be answered so i will keep it reserved uh so alexander worked for 6 uh, months with him alexander knew german and english mansukh bhai knew only gujarati so now the question is how will you communicate with an innovator who doesn't know your language right so let me just uh, remove full screen so that i can see the chat uh yeah first uh, and what problem did it solve I, the photo was there so there are two questions one is why did i so out of so many innovations that we have supported over the years more than 200 why did i choose mansur bhai patel's one he first is that he became a millennial of course and his uh, marketing strategy was very uh, unique he actually Uh, converse this with the existing ginning industry so wherever there was a ginning industry his machine was there so that's why it's it scaled and but it it addressed a very uh, rampant very rampant social problem that is there in the cotton industry so what is the problem and second if you were to work with mansukh bhai where 
uh, he did not know your language, how will you communicate with the innovator? Any answers, please? Koi jawab? We can use, ma'am, some middlemen to communicate. And if middlemen, because we have to have a staff, a half a staff, then a half a staff, and now we have a team. Okay, so, 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 previous, so we didn't have that, uh, that many people so that we could attach, uh, like one, we could, uh, we could have one dedicated staff for uh, innovator. And uh, staying with the innovator for six months, uh, and leaving your staff only to cater to an innovator is a very difficult thing. Can you think of any other way? A little low cost, maybe. Yes. Best? Yes. Rashnavi has given a point. Illustration, diagrams. Yes. Yes. So they just spoke through diagrams. And in six months, the problem was actually solved. Now, what problem did this innovation solve? Yes, I agree. So yeah, what problem is, did this innovation solve? One social problem. I'm not talking about technological problem, uh, social problem. Pain while spinning, jobs, communication, jobs. Okay, what kind of jobs are we talking about? Is it a job that you like to do or I will like to do? Who generally does that? Ye kaam kin ka hota hai, generally. Uh, should, should I, so the picture was obvious. So that's sure that probably my slide was not that interesting that people did not see the uh, picture. Uh, so yes, women and? Women and? Show it again. Who, 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 people have missed it. Uh, show it, show it again. Nein, nein, nein. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Got it, got it, got no, it. No, 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 no. So, Yes, children. Why do you know? Because their eyes are very dark and they're very uh, thin. Supple. And, yeah. So it is easier for them to do. Plus, wherever women and children are employed, the wages are very low. So any job where the wages are very low are generally done by women and children. Cotton sector employs a lot of child labor. Abhi bhi picking me see a problem gai nahi hai. Lekin is se problem solve And how you know? Because Mansuk Bhai used to do it when he was a kid. To some Vedana se Sajan Shilta bol rahe From empathy to innovation. So this was one of the cases. Uh, and at least from this part of the uh, value chain, this was, child labor was removed. And at times people say that uh, mechanization hota hai, so jobs will be lost. But I will, like we always say that some jobs are better lost. Now, even if they were not children or women, if problem if labels are being replaced and we can give them a place at a higher level, at a higher value chain, then that will be an ideal a scenario of inclusive development. So I will come back with, so I will share the second riddle for you. Okay, so. Okay, so there are two pictures. One is of the first model and Another is of the second model, which our engineers and experts worked. So what is the problem do, do you see in terms of taking this innovation to the market? So this is a mobile grounder thresher. What it does that while it moves on the field, it thresses the ground, ground nut. Uh, the top soil remain, falls there. So there is uh, soil erosion is uh, minimized. And the fodder is also cleaner. Now, why would we like because this these innovations? If you see the it looks very different. Why will we not go? Why will we not let the innovator go with the design, the first design, and we kind of iterated and changed, and it kind of went into the second design. So this was the first. 
Any answers, please? I will keep it. Yeah, keep it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, because I will, so then you will have to see because I will not be able to see the chat then. Okay. So, restricted view? No, if you see. Uh, so if you see the driver was sitting here, right? So it is, it doesn't restrict the view. What else has come up? Uh, no, storage is not the problem. Storage Retrofitting. Is not the problem. No, no, that point is right. Retrofitting. I mean, this is built into the, yeah, you have. And I'm getting, you so can so the the So if, if uh, the chassis is cut, then it has to be approved as an uh, farm or uh, uh, automobile, right? So the process as a new machine altogether. So the process is very lengthy and cumbersome. While in the second uh, prototype, now it is a product, of course, what happened that we made it into an attachment with the existing tractor. So now this could go for testing. Why do we need testing? Because without testing, there will be no certification. Without certification, you cannot approach banks and uh, uh, approach any financial institution because they will need these test results. Okay, so this is another part that uh, we can help the innovator with because they do not know the rules and regulations of the law of the land uh, in terms of like this complexity, right? So because you may have a background or you have access to at least tools from where you can find these uh, solutions and help the innovator. So if if we had probably known him at the beginning, we he might not have invested so much money in uh, making the first prototype, right? So this is somehow we see that if we could help him maybe in the first prototype itself, then some resources would have been uh, saved. This was uh the yes balance was a bit of issue uh but not as much as the laws regulations and rules were now i have the third one uh This, one, yeah, sure. so this is the third one. Uh, it is a modified crematorium made by uh, Arjun Bhai Pagdar uh, from Kesod. What it does that it uses fire road, but it uses only one fourth of the wood that is otherwise needed for burning a body uh, according to the Hindu rituals. Hindu उसके लिए जो प्रथा है उसके हिसाब से ये जैसे 400 किलो की लकड़ी लगभग एक नॉर्मल बॉडी को चाहिए होता है but yes if people are uh, like they have edema or they have died of some problems where the body becomes difficult to burn then there are more uh, then then more wood is required but otherwise 400 kgs and this does it in about 100 kgs plus the timing is like uh, it burns it in one hour and uh, one of the things that sets us uh, apart is that you can open the door and you can do some of the rituals like Kapal Kriya, jo, uh, sir, the skull is uh, broken with the wooden stick. So those things, all the rituals could be done. Now, if you were a part of Gyan and you had to find an entrepreneur or an investor, like an investor who will invest in this technology. How will you go about, who will you approach? Somebody who will uh, like to invest in a business of crematorium. Your answers, please. I like you, Kesar. Even at, <laughs> in, <laughs> yes, forest department. Yes. so. Uh, now, what happened that we, we, we got a, a small support from 
the uh, climate change department so they had a so i i forgot to mention that gyan never had any money of its own very small little corpus where we could sustain but what we do is we bring in uh, we plug these innovators into different schemes previously even for csr tep program was there many of our innovators were initially supported through that so we uh, look out for opportunities where these innovators can uh, be uh, helped with so uh, in this case the climate change department for a small prototype now what happened during this covid situation where uh, like thousands of bodies were being burned every day and we felt that how could we approach people we so we wrote to all the municipal municipalities firstly for gujarat because we are located here and due to the lockdown and restrictions we could not move to other uh, states so out of those uh, the collector office from gandhinagar they called us and they showed their interest and they gave us space and uh, can you i will show you the picture once again now can you tell me how it can be improved and what is like what is the problem that you still see and how it can be improved further i will just take two more minutes and then professor will wind up for the day just yeah so what is the problem do you see you can maybe unmute yourself if you want and how it can yes in powder it can so it use any biomaterial so that's uh, इसमें अभी भी एक प्रॉब्लम है इट्स अ क्लोज सिस्टम एंड सो इट टेक्स सम टाइम टू कूल डाउन सो नेक्स्ट बॉडी विल बी बर्न ओनली आफ्टर एन आवर नो इट डजेंट मेल्ट इट डजेंट मेल्ट सो इट इज रनिंग इन सेवन म्यूनिसपालिटीज लाइक मोस्टली इन रूरल एरियाज और क्या प्रॉब्लम हो सकती है व्हाट आई ट्रैफिक ऑफ बॉडीज दैट वी हैड इन द रीसेंट पैंडेमिक टाइम वाज सो मच दैट वी कुड नॉट लूज दैट वन आवर गैप राइट तो हाउ डू यू थिंक वी कैन चेंज द डिजाइन मेड लाइक अ रैक यस लेकिन पता है क्या बिकॉज दीज आर वेरी यू नो इमोशनल इश्यूज द पीपल विल नॉट लाइक टू मिक्स अप द asti and the remains the mortal remains right so what is the other way is it movable yes it is movable so you can so the jacket can be moved and uh, it can be brought out so you can see the rails on which it can move uh, exhaust system is there and uh, so it, it there uh, there is a small blower uh, so even the so when the blower was placed at the base of the crematorium what happened when the first oh yes testing i forgot the very interesting very interesting story how will you test this crematorium not in the current situation this was done like a couple of years back when we did not have covid in normal situation how will you test test this crematorium who will let you use this crematorium to uh, cremate uh, they are near and dear ones kyunki testing ka zaruri hai animals ka kyunki uh, you know burning uh, fat percentage pe bahut depend karta hai so you will not get the exact data that you need you need a human body pen drive pen drive ko lo ni itre mogi de thande it to sasta pad thanda online garbage no unidentified bodies yes so jo lash claim nahi hoti hai so we uh, we can contacted of course professor gupta uh, influence helped us so reaching junagadh where the uh, municipal corporation said that uh, the next uh, moment any unclaimed body comes uh, we will uh, test this out we installed it and then we were just waiting 
and then they, they, a family arrived uh, with a body of a woman. She was a little on the heavier side, maybe 150 kgs or so. And she had, uh, she died of an, of an illness wherein the lower part of the body had a lot of water. And they were looking out for a place where they will cremate the body. Uh, we made a request and we also told them that uh, because we are testing it for the first time, the body may remain unburned or there, may, there are like chances of that to happen. And when somebody said that, how did this uh, network sustain for so long? Uh, please understand that we do not make false promises and we, we are very transparent. We knew that this might happen and there, we did not want to hurt the sentiments of the uh, kin of the departed soul. So we told them, but the, when they, uh, we told them about our organization, our network, somehow they also knew about uh, Honeybee Network, maybe because we are in Gujarat, uh, at least physically present here. And they said that uh, even if the body remains half burnt, they will take it and burn it in the conventional uh, crematorium. So that was actually the social capital of the network that helped us to test this innovation. And uh, so our innovator is working on the next model where we are trying to make, uh, so there's the same jacket will remain, but there will be two uh, kilns and it can move so that some of the heat can be uh, used. So professor, uh, you can just maybe wrap up for today. Yes, thank and you. you can write to us anytime if you have any questions or if you're interested, do visit gan.org. We are making the newer version of the website, but if you want to work on any uh, grassroots innovation in future, do remember to contact us. Yeah, thank you, Ramika. This is a good point that you ended on, that uh, we want volunteers for different functions of the value chain. Uh, conceptually, we are talking about learning is the key driver of Honeybee Network. Unless you learn something new, you wouldn't come to us, or we won't be able to retain you. So one of the binding factors for the network is that there is always something new to share, something new happening somewhere, and somebody will share it in the network. So that's how the curiosity uh, cultivates or fuels the compassion, which in turn uh, sustains the creativity and also generates collaboration. Now, learning is very fundamental. Leveraging is what Sashti uh, was set up for. And as you can see the logo, give me a place to stand and I'll move the word. Uh, this was the pun on Aquides and uh, literally speaking, the knowledge of women, this is our logo, actually speaking. So we have given primacy to the knowledge of the women as a major driver of the way the world will change. Even today, the incorporation of women's knowledge is marginal. The day it becomes mainstream, the world will start changing. It is not without, uh, it's not just coincidence that New Zealand is the first COVID-free country the way that Prime Minister talks to the people and the way they have managed it is an amazing way, amazing empathy, amazing communication so that it has worked that way. But there could be other reasons. Linking, the linking is between innovation, investment, enterprise, that what uh, Namika has explained, I will not repeat. Legitimization is what NIF is. So let me briefly tell you about two minutes. How much time do we have? We have about five minutes. Uh, okay, so... Uh, in 1998, GAN was set up in 97. So 98, I spent six months talking to different secretaries to government. Uh, I met the Science and Technology Secretary, I met the Industry Secretary, I met Rural Development Secretary, Planning Commission, Agriculture. And somehow everybody was offering support for a pilot. I said, we have done the pilot. We have already got about 10,000 ideas. And uh, if you don't uh, feel convinced, we'll come again after five years. Somebody suggested that there's this uh, secretary in Ministry of Exp Finance, Expenditure, who is a physicist, and he might understand your idea. So we, Dr. E. S. Sarma from, uh, he was at that time Secretary of Expenditure, and Dr. Kelkar was Secretary of Finance. So I went to Dr. Sarma's office. He kept me waiting for about four hours, something I've never done in my life. I never wait outside the bureaucrat's office. But that day I did, swallowed my pride. 
waited and uh, somehow he came out apologizing that there was some attendant delegation and so on and so forth he listened to me for a while and then he said wait a minute let me call the secretary and he called dr kelkar who was very busy it was month of december 98 and he said uh, the budget was being developed you know they were all busy february used to be the month february used to be the month for budget so anyway dr kelkar came for a few minutes he stayed for an hour looked at the database and said uh, professor what has to be done i said we have to make a foundation uh, a national foundation to scale up the work that we are doing and uh, he said all right give us a small one page note and i gave a note we had asked for 200 crores but uh, kargil happened then in 99 you know that kargil war took place money was not there but our minister in a budget speech had announced that they will set up an if so when it is announced on the in the budget speech or it is given as an assurance it comes to the assurances committee so parliament is by duty bound to track all the assurances that minister has given to the parliament they are they have to implement them so minister said i have given an assurance i will have to do that so we got 20 crore corpus and on uh, in uh, first march 9 2000 and i have came into being with a very uh, respected board we had uh, Dr. Kelkar, Dr. A. Sharma, and uh, Anand Mahendra. We had eleven. Uh, uh, Dr. Mushtaq was the chairperson. I was the executive vice chair, and uh, there were several other distinguished people on the board. Uh, and then this board, Dr. Kelkar, was also on the board initially. And then this board continued. I mean, we continued in our position, Dr. Mushtaq and myself, till 2018, when the government reconstituted the board. New chairperson was appointed, and they and we. I'm on the board still, but we have otherwise no executive responsibility. So, and I have institutionalized what we were trying to do. Now it's for DST Institute, so it's part of the government, and the process has been institutionalized. I'll just take a couple of minutes more, and so we have. So these were the different functions, as you can see here: uh, scouting and documentation, value. addition enterprise ip addition all of these functions were actually nothing but what gyan was doing so as you can see and i was a scale up of gyan gyan was set up in 97 till 2000 we had a three years experience of an of gyan so we scaled up gyan shashti gave birth to the gyan as a incubator gyan gave birth to an if actually speaking and that's how an if came into being and is is one of the global model now of uh, success uh different kinds of innovations that we have i want to just mention briefly those of you who are from andhra might have seen the picture on malaysia uh he had his mother used to do asu asu is a system by which you wrap the yarn uh 900 times 9000 times so for one sari it is a double ikat system pochampalli so you have the same design on the front side same design on the back side pochampalli I mean, double ikat system is one of the most complicated design of uh, textile of the weaving tradition. So one day his mother said, "Malaysian, I can't do any more. It pains my shoulders." So Malaysian said, "I don't know anything else." He was only tenth pass, and you know what he did? It. He worked and worked and worked. He got a lot of loans, a lot of debt. He learned programming. He learned mechanical engineering. He learned all of that by himself by reading books, by going to the shop, by talking to people. and ultimately he designed this machine or uh, this machine this is how it was this is how it became and it's a great story where uh, later on dr Brig uh, brigade ganesham who coordinates our network in andhra pradesh and telangana uh, i have been to malaysian's house in warangal uh, he his wife and his mother contributed to this a great deal and this is a success story now hundreds of uh, weavers have been given this machine uh, to reduce the drudgery of uh, the women who had to do as explained this is how they had to do so they had to move the hand like this and it used to pain here so there are there are some such stories large number of such stories i'll not take more time just mention that what honeybee network has done incidentally uh, is to really make as solutions come on the surface and given a boost to the confidence that if such people can do if ordinary people can do such complicated and such can you imagine a 10th pass person learning programming so that if you want on a particular peg four times the thread should go some other peg it should go nine times some other it should go three times this is a system pre tie and die system after this they will do the tie and die and then 
you remember, I mean, what is the system? Warp and warp, weft are the two systems. One thread like this, one thread like that. If you want the same pattern, then every pixel, imagine now, will have to have the same color. It's such a complicated idea, such a complicated technology, but they have perfected it over the years. And now there's a machine for thousands, maybe 700 years, 1,000 years, there was no improvement in the technology. Comes Malaysia and he makes an improvement. Now it's possible that some of you might like to work with him and make improvement. more improvement, that's possible. But uh, I like what Nitin says, a network is our net worth. Thank you. I never thought it this way, but it's nice, nice pun on what network is. So friends, we will uh, stop here. If you have any comment, we will take five minutes. Some of you came late. So if I, or maybe three minutes, uh, you, if you don't mind, we can extend it by three minutes. Anybody has any question? Please go ahead. Mind you, the elements of the ecosystem will be same for formal factor also. If you have the innovation, you will have to fulfill the, all the same chains that we talked about. Many of you will not like to become entrepreneur. Many of you would like to license your technology or will like to become R&D director in the company and somebody else will have to run the company. So the broad framework will remain same. Only thing is that the, the, the difficulties are more in case of grasp innovations than let us say in the innovations that you will develop. But we can discuss it separately as to how lessons can be learned from Harvey Network for scholars like you uh, in terms of uh, doing uh, in terms of developing solutions which are now group assignment yes the group assignments are supposed to be uh, for those unmet needs little more sophisticated unmet need than the one that you mentioned in the first round uh, unmet need of the society of the common people but which requires your skills but it also requires other skills so maybe you are from computer science, somebody is from the material science, somebody else is from the uh, mechanical CMARI. So if you can use, uh, uh, it's a good point, Rahul, I will come to that. Uh, they have used the, uh, they have used the furnace bricks, what you call that heat resistant bricks, but not the one that you're mentioning. Uh, so uh, there's a telegram group where you can form the groups. The, Friend has put the telegram group address here. Akshay has put the telegram group address. So you can discuss there. Uh, if you first question will be not to solve the problem, but first to identify different parameters of that unmet need. So define the problem better. Don't jump to the solution. Uh, that is a problem with many of us. We try to, before we have done a proper analysis of the problem, we start jumping on the solution. Please don't think of solution immediately. Think of characterizing, par parameterizing the problem. Find out as many different dimensions as possible. You know, social, cultural, uh, institutional, technological, of course, design problems, affordability problems, and so forth. So please uh, identify the unmet need voluntarily around, and the, everybody will read and then say, I want to join this problem, but this is interesting to me also. And then you will join uh, groups, maybe three, four, five people. If you want a bigger group, you can discuss that. And this group will then first analyze the problem, then deconstruct the, uh, uh, anticipate different solutions, then deconstruct them. That means contradict the solution that you have chosen and try to find out what else can be done. You will, in some sense, uh, be the enemy of your own idea and try to shoot it down and say, okay, I will not work on it or something else, so that you don't miss something which is contradictory. We call it paradoxical uh, thinking, a very important way of solving problems. Uh, so you will try that. We'll discuss that again. And then I will make a presentation. We have some days, two, two or three days at the end, where you will present uh, the whole cycle of thinking. How did you identify the need? How did you characterize it? How did you make a mind map, how did you then uh, uh, generate solutions, how did you contradict your solutions, and then finally deconstruct it and then try to develop some final suggestion. That's what we are trying to do. I hope it's clear. Thank you so much. Good luck. Stay safe. All the best. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir.
थैंक यू सर थैंक यू सर बाय थैंक यू सर थैंक यू सर गुड नाइट थैंक यू सर